I talk a lot about misunderstandings about climate change because there are a lot of misunderstandings about climate change. Now, unfortunately, some of the worst misunderstandings about climate change come from the very people who are meant to be putting in place policies to protect us. Now, without a doubt, the king of failing to grasp climate change is Donald Trump. And actually, he'd probably be quite happy to hear that because his understanding of climate science is second only to his humility. I, think I am actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. But there's another kind of climate politician that's definitely worth talking about. And that's the kind of politician who says some of the right things, but then fails to act in any of the right ways. Which takes us neatly onto Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister of Australia. Now, today I'm going to break down some iconic Scott Morrison climate change clips and let you know how they make me feel. So the first one we have today is actually not from when he was Prime Minister of Australia, it's from 2017 when he was Treasurer. Um, and it's from the Houses of Parliament in Australia and... Well, let's just have a look. The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't be scared. Won't the Treasurer you. knows the rule on props. It's coal. It was okay, just straight off the bat, I mean, who goes into their job just like holding a lump of coal? Unless your job is to like dig coal out the ground. Um, it kind of reminds me of that famous uh, snowball clip from America. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. But infantile tactics aside, let's uh, go a bit further and just see what the point Scott Morrison is actually trying to make is. Mr. Speaker, those opposite have an ideological, pathological fear of coal. There's no word for colophobia officially, Mr. Speaker, but that's the malady that afflicts those opposite. Colophobia. Um, yeah, there is no word for that because it's not a real thing. Coal is an incredibly damaging material to dig up and burn. Digging it up uh, for the workers who, who have to do that um, is very bad for health. It leads to horrible conditions like, um, like black lung. Um, burning the stuff releases lots of toxic um, materials into the atmosphere and can release them into waterways. So even without taking climate change into account, coal is um, much more dangerous than other fossil fuels and hundreds of times more dangerous than renewables. But when you take climate change into account and the fact that coal is uh, the biggest release of carbon dioxide um, for electricity production, uh, makes coal a very serious threat and something that we should be very scared of. Because of their pathological, ideological opposition to coal being an important part of our sustainable and more certain energy future. So I find this interesting. He talks about um, a, a more certain, more sustainable energy future. Um, it's hard to, to see how um, you can paint coal as, as sustainable because, um, well, on, on the one hand, it's a limited resource which uh, can't ever be indefinitely sustained. And on the other hand, it damages the environment in, in many ways, including through climate change. So it's interesting that he uses this very language, which is why we shouldn't use coal, as a kind of excuse to burn it. Affordable energy is what Australian businesses need to remain competitive. They can't fizzle out in the dark as those opposite would have them do as business. So here he's talking about this kind of economic case. Um, and this is what people often say. Um, they say, oh, we need to burn fossil fuels because it's the only economic option. And you know what, like, Maybe 10 years ago, they would have had um, some kind of point. I mean, I still don't think choosing um, something for economic, economic reasons, which happens to destroy the planet, makes much economic sense. But um, today, uh, renewables are actually the, the cheapest way of making electricity for, for much of the world. So this idea that um, if you want to be economic and you want to be competitive, the only way to do that is uh, to dig up this toxic fossil fuel and burn it, um, that's just um, completely ancient news and not correct at all. So we move now on to our second clip, which um, 
was from last year, was at the time of the, the school strikes were sweeping the world, but um, Scott Morrison's reaction was very interesting when he was asked about it. Um, here we go. Mr Speaker, climate change is a very real and serious issue which demands the attention of governments at all levels and it has the attention of this government. This is an example of what I was talking about right at the beginning of the video, talking this talk, you know, really saying, you know, like, yes, climate change is serious, we need to pay attention to it, and of course I am paying attention to it. Um, if only that were true. Um, unfortunately, uh, Australia has set itself very weak climate change targets that it is on track to pretty pathetically miss. Just straight off the bat, Scott Morrison presenting Australia as if it's doing a really great job on, on climate change uh, when it continues to do the very opposite. Kids should go to school. That's what we're committed to. We're not, we don't support the idea of kids not going to school to participate in things that can be dealt with outside of school. You know what? <laughs> I agree with you, Scott Morrison. I think these things should be being dealt with outside of school. But, unfortunately, they're not. Just before I carry on with the rest of this video, I wanted to take a quick pause to shout out the incredibly generous new patron I've, I've had, uh, Robert Amarongan. I uh, apologise in my shout out for probably pronouncing your name terribly, but thank you so much for supporting the channel and helping uh, me create all my future videos. Um, and thank you to all the patrons who continue to support this channel. If you want to join them, there will be a link somewhere in the vicinity of my face. Okay, now back to looking at depressing climate change clips. Okay, so now we fast forward to um, late 2019, early 2020, and we're looking at Scott Morrison's response to, uh, to the devastating bushfires that occurred. So let's see what he had to say about people's concerns that these were linked to climate change. The suggestion that any way, shape or form, with Australia uh, accountable for 1.3% of the world's emissions, that the individual actions of Australia are impacting directly on specific fire events, whether it's here or anywhere else in the world, that doesn't bear up to credible scientific evidence either. So, this, I mean, this is what you call a straw man argument, because... Um, I really don't think anyone was saying that, like, exactly what Australia is doing literally caused this specific fire to happen. Um, so to be very clear about what we are saying, we're talking about how much, um, how much worse climate change makes things. We're not talking about climate change triggering fires. Um, so that, you know, there's a, there are a lot of different factors that play into how bad the fires will be and also a lot of different things which can start those fires off. But of course, if there's more material for those fires to burn, then they can burn for a lot longer, they can cover a lot more area. That's why you're more likely to get these fires during the dry, hot seasons than you are during the cold, rainy season. The last month in Australia, where, when these fires hit, was record-breakingly hot um, in Australia. Um, there was also record-breaking drought. Um, the heat, um, we can tell, has strong links to the fact that the world is, is heating up. I mean, of course, when the world heats up, you're more likely to break temperature records. Um, the record-breaking drought, um, there's still research kind of underway to see how much that's linked to climate change. But of course, these two things provide fuels for the fire, and those two things absolutely um, are contributed to every emitter in the planet, including Australia, which takes us on to this 1% um, remark. The emissions from Australia may just be 1%, but if you take into account all the uh, fossil fuels that Australia digs up and sells overseas, that jumps up to more like 4%. And this is for a country which represents just 0.3 of the world's population. But even just to start talking about the numbers like this, I think misses the point. Uh, we need to get global carbon dioxide emissions to zero, which means everyone everywhere needs to do their part to get the emissions down. This argument that individuals can't make a difference is a very dangerous argument for a politician to make, because you could quite easily say to all Scott Morrison voters, you know what, there's no point in you casting your vote, because a single vote won't possibly make any difference. It's exactly the same logic, and yet somehow I can't see ScoMo saying that to his constituents 
anytime soon. Okay, we're heading now to our very final clip um, and we'll see what more ScoMo has to say about these, uh, these bushfires which really ravaged Australian wildlife and people alike. It's not for me to, to make commentaries on what those outside of Australia think Australia should do. We'll do in Australia what we think is right for Australia. Oh, this annoys me so much because, of course, any emissions we create anywhere in the world affect the entire world because carbon dioxide affects the entire world. But not only that, uh, Scott Morrison is effectively telling the rest of the world to mind their own business when Australia has been doing the exact opposite on climate change. So you may have heard that the uh, climate negotiations at the end of last year, COP25, um, set out to, I mean, not really be nearly as ambitious as you'd hope um, climate negotiations would be in this situation. But even with that no ambition, completely failed to achieve what they set out to achieve. Um, which, when you say it like that, kind of reminds you of Australia's personal climate targets, which is a coincidence because Australia was actually instrumental in, uh, in the climate negotiations kind of falling apart. They've been named as one of the, the countries which really threw a spanner in the works. So uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty rich for Scott Morrison to tell the rest of the world to mind their business on climate change. You may be watching this in other parts of the world and thinking, oh, I'm so glad my politician isn't like Scott Morrison and knows how to take climate change seriously. But the reality is that most politicians and most companies and even most of us are a bit like Scott Morrison. We've all got quite good at talking the talk and saying how scared we are about climate change and how important it is and how we need to do more while doing none of those things. And so wherever you are, whoever you're talking to, whether you're emailing a politician or chatting to a friend, it's important uh, we put our actions where our words are, because the time for excuses has long run out. Thanks a lot for watching and make sure to watch my New Year's video where I discuss the Australian bushfires over here. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, bye.